Sisters Haley and Lauren Durant are frequently asked to present identification. However, this is usually to verify that they are, in fact, identical twins. Many people simply do not accept that the two kids, one of whom was born white and the other black, could possibly be the daughters of the same parents. More astounding still, they have younger twin girls that share the same unique coloration as their parents, making them a one-in-a-million family altogether. This year, to celebrate their 18th birthdays, the elder sisters discuss how their closest friends share the same outfits, still live in the same bedroom, despite being apart, and how they never get tired of the surprised reactions they receive when they tell people they're twins. Haley, who shares her father Dean's dark skin and hair, stated in their first-ever exclusive interview, Some people may be quite unpleasant. They'll say things like, You're lying. You're not twins. Show us. So we'll either recite the same address or take our passports out of our pockets. It's amusing to see the look of surprise on people's faces. As Asian, white, and black students, we found it challenging to fit in at college because there were so many groups of us there. The black group was attempting to integrate me, and I thought to myself, this is my white twin sister. No one could believe what they were hearing. People are still staring at us as though we've performed some sort of miracle. It still amazes me that we're identical twins. According to Lauren, who has the same green eyes and fair hair as her mother, Allison Spooner, people automatically assume we're best friends rather than sisters, much alone twins. I'm overjoyed because she is my best friend. She's my rock. We're going to go out clubbing as a group this weekend. When the bouncers discover that we're related, they're going to be surprised. Doctors were surprised when the duo was born in early 2001 appearing very different from each other. Against all chances, they were one in 500,000. An even more surprising twist occurred seven years later when their younger twin sisters, Leah and Mia, both now 10 years old, were similarly born with one having a white complexion and the other having a darker complexion. This resulted in their being inducted into the Guinness World Book Records. They continue to be the world's only two sets of identical twins from the same family that have differing complexion tones. The children's mother, Allison, a 37-year-old office manager, expressed surprise at their 18th birthday. I can't believe my miracle babies are turning 18. Apart from the fact that they're physically different, they're best friends and extremely close in every manner. It took me several years to grasp the scientific principles behind why they appeared to be so different. Everyone, as always, says, they aren't twins, says the author. I just assumed one was yours and the other was her buddy, a woman at the doctor's office once explained to me. They were never truly billed, despite the fact that they've received some hurtful remarks at first. How come one of you is milk chocolate and the other is white chocolate? Used to be a popular question among school children. It doesn't matter, the girls used to say, because they were sisters and closest friends. I was quite pleased with these. We've become something of a phenomenon among their peers. In biology class, their school used to have a large photo of them on the wall. No one could comprehend or believe what was happening. When two pairs of twins are born to the same parents, it's extremely rare for them to have distinct skin and hair colors from their parents. The chances of their having differing complexion and hair colors from their parents is one in a million. In contrast to identical twins who share their genetic makeup, because they were conceived from a single fertilized egg that separates two generate two embryos, the genetic phenomenon occurs only when two separate eggs are fertilized by two different sperm at the same time. Haley and Lauren have been inseparable since they were children. When I was in primary school, all I wanted to do was spend time with my sister, Haley recalled. In addition to clothing and toys, we would share a common interest in television, reading, and other such things. When we were kids, we were treated like celebrities. Everyone wanted to take pictures with us and inquired as to what it was like to be twins who were different. It appeared to be normal to us. People constantly ask me what it's like, and I always answer, it's just like being with your closest friend, Lauren explained. People simply do not believe that we're identical twins. We must encourage them to Google us. The twins were moved into different courses when they were in secondary school, but Lauren recalls that they made sure we were never apart outside of school. It's this detachment that they attribute to the fact that they now each have their own sets of interest. In addition to acting and theatrical studies, Haley is studying sociology at a community college, while Lauren is studying art and business studies. Lauren is undecided about her career path, 
Well, Haley aims to become a theater producer. In so many respects, Lauren and I are the same, she remarked. The two of us say the same things at the same time, and we complete each other's sentences. There are occasions where I can tell exactly what she's thinking. However, we have different interests. Haley likes makeup, whereas I enjoy video games and vloggers. That's not something she's into. Despite this, the two have shared a room since they were born, and they wouldn't have it any other way if they had their way. Even on vacation, Haley and I have always slept in the same room, Haley explained, despite it when Lauren goes to stay with friends because I can't sleep when she's not here. She's as messy as they come, though, and I'm constantly cleaning up after her. I'm a little more maternal than most. It's nice to have someone to talk to late at night, Lauren continued. It's a pleasure to be in her room. We discuss matters and have heart-to-hearts with one another. Haley hopes to attend university next year, although I do not. Me not having her present is going to be extremely detrimental. It's going to be really strange, but I'm going to see her a lot. The twins, who are both single, have quite diverse choices in men. We don't have any boyfriends, Haley explains. Neither Lauren nor I have a particularly celebrity obsession at the moment. But I enjoy rappers, and Lauren enjoys YouTubers. There will never be a quarrel over boys in our house. The couple acknowledge that they're also role models for their daughters, Leah, who was born with a fairer complexion, and Mia, who has her father's skin tone. However, in contrast to their older siblings, the younger siblings have become increasingly similar in recent years. She lives with Paver Dean, 43, in the Hampshire town of Fleet, and says of her children, the smaller one looks up to the older ones and are constantly emulating them. It's the equivalent of having two mini-me's. In their youth, they were the only ones who remember what it was like to be so alike, but appear so different from one another. Lauren and Haley are my heroes. Leah, who is in the same school as Mia and shares a bedroom with her, added. I enjoy my older sister's company. We aspire to be like them when we grow up, but we don't get the opportunity to interact with them because they're always at college or at work. When my sister falls over, I always come to her aid and pull her up. People don't believe her to be my twin, but I tell them that she is in fact my sister. That's what my elder sisters did, so I'm following in their footsteps. Lauren and Haley are the finest, Mia went on to say. They've taught me that having a twin sister is the nicest thing in the world, even if you're not identical. Skin Color Science Human skin tone represents a tens of thousands of year evolutionary balancing act. There's a good reason why human skin tone varies globally, with darker populations near the equator and lighter populations in the poles. Basically, darker skin benefits from more sun, while fair skin benefits from less sun. It's clear when you see how pale people suffer on the beach. Actually, the human color spectrum has little to do with sunburn or skin cancer. Instead, two vital vitamins, folate and vitamin D, have molded complexion. UV light from the sun destroys folate. The skin produces vitamin D following exposure to the same sunlight. Thus, the balancing act. Preserve folate while producing vitamin D. So we need a solar dosage that meets both. While the intensity of UV radiation is determined by geography, the amount that penetrates your skin is determined by pigmentation. That's the theory put up by anthropologist Nina Jablonski and geographer George Chaplin in 2000. But to understand skin tone, we need to go back to hairier times. Notable skin tone of our ancestors millions of years ago, because early homonyms were probably covered in black fur. Our evolutionary cousins, chimpanzees and gorillas, have light skin under dark fur today. Thus, they presumably had pale skin. Our forefathers shed their fur and developed skin pigmentation. Many academics agree that losing our fur helped us stay cool while foraging as upright walking bipeds in the sunny, open settings of equatorial Africa. The trade-off was bare skin exposed to severe UV rays all year. Darker skin would have been preferable for protecting folate stores one to two million years ago. Why is folate vital? The vitamin affects DNA activity, but its main effect is on embryonic evolutionary fitness or the ability to live and reproduce. Neural tube problems like spina bifida can occur when pregnant women don't get enough folate. Most neural tube abnormalities are deadly. Sunlight breaks down folate in blood plasma and skin biopsies, according to research. Dark skin blocks this by absorbing UV photons and chemically disarming their damaging byproducts. But the human bloodline did not stay in Africa. People used to travel north and south to higher latitudes with less sunlight. Then came the vitamin D issue. Like folate, this vitamin is essential for fitness. 
It aids calcium absorption, essential for strong bones and immunity. Vitamin D is produced in the skin when particular UV rays trigger the process. Away from the tropics, there isn't enough UV of the proper wavelength to make vitamin D. A 1980 study used fresh foreskin from Caucasian neonates circumcised in Boston. Each sample was divided in half. A portion of the foreskin was then exposed to midday daylight for three hours while the other was kept dark. From spring until fall, the sun-exposed skin still produced the precursor for vitamin D. Until March 17th, no appreciable precursor was generated during winter. So, to receive enough vitamin D year-round in high latitudes like Boston, people have to rely on body storage of meals like fatty fish. Getting enough vitamin D is difficult for darker skin types. Comparing dark and light-skinned northern city dwellers, pale persons had higher vitamin D levels all year. Their lighter skin let in more light. As humans expanded across the globe, a variety of skin tones arose. Aside from genetic adaptations, communities have created cultural adaptations to cope with changing sunlight. We can eat foods high in folate and vitamin D. We can also build shelters, dress appropriately, and use sunscreen. Skin color is one of the most noticeable and superficial human differences, but the evolutionary story is the same. Geography, biology, and cultural traditions all played a role in the evolution of human complexion from light to dark. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can.